welcome 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 everybody and if you were on yesterday it was my hundred my hundredth live today is just 101 which is still good because i'm on my 101th live and the other question is have i used this background before i would love to know in the comments hey john how are you thank you so much for the love i will be reposting don't you worry and just to let you guys know, you'll see me a little bit more by myself, but that's to come. My guest is here, who I'm excited to bring on just because I've like this before. So I'm excited, and I can't wait for you guys to learn more about my wonderful guests as they come on up here, because they're running for office, justice for peace, they're a lawyer. Hello, hello. Hi, how are you? I'm amazing. How about yourself? Doing well, doing well. Sorry, I thought we were going live with the, the Hottie for Judge Instagram, but this one's okay too. Well, you you told me which one, Hottie for Judge, Hottie for Law. You told me to put both. I listened to your instructions. Oh, they're both here. Oh, beautiful. It's As long as we're here together. Yes, yes, yes. So without further ado, let me introduce everybody to who you are. My guest, he's a personal injury injury attorney running for Justice of Peace in Precinct 4, Fort Bend County, Texas, father, philanthropist. His name is Hussein, Hussein Hadi. I am very honored to have you on here because you're my first guest who's actually running for office. I've never had that before, so I'm like wow. super excited. Beautiful. And I do have... I do have a disclaimer just because you are an attorney and people might have questions, which I welcome them. I, if you have a question pertaining to an open case, feel free to ask in the DMs just because it might get a little too personal and we don't want to, you know, get you guys in trouble. But before we get into more about Hussein, let me tell you guys who I am. My name is Shri and I owe, I'm the owner of Next Level Consulting. I love, love, love interviewing different entrepreneurs from different industries from all over the world. And without further ado, again, we're going to get into Hussein's journey. So Hussein, tell us a little bit about you. Uh, so I'm not sure if I can say a little bit about me, but, um, you know, I was born and raised in Alif. Uh, my parents came here in the 70s from Iran uh, to study and then go back. But unfortunately, because of the Iranian revolution, they stayed here, which is a blessing because they created a foundation for me to grow up in our community and for me to now have children who are growing up in our community. Yeah. Yes. And so if people don't know your background, which some of them are not like me who, you know, stalked you, <laughs> being a lawyer was not your first choice. What did you want to become originally and what caused you to change your mind? You know, like most Middle Eastern parents, you have two choices, doctor or lawyer. And my parents wanted me to be a doctor. Um, and I went to DeBakey High School for Health Professions. I did do a little bit at LSIC before I went to DeBakey. Um, but, I, you know, just being a doctor wasn't my passion. Um, I guess I always had a, a knack for arguing and for standing up for the little people throughout school. Uh, so I decided to go into law. And it's been a blessing ever since I made that decision. I think John... Phoenix Life Quotes, he went to school for, I believe, becoming a doctor, and then it changed his mind along the way. So I have met a few people who, like, through that journey, going towards it, realized this is not for me. I want to change and go somewhere else. And you know what? I want to know, what did your parents say when you said you wanted to become a lawyer? Uh, very supportive, very supportive. They said, you know, whatever you want to do, if you want to go work any field, any path, although their dreams are to be a doctor or a lawyer, they never really pushed that and said, you have no choice but to do it. So they love my decision to be a lawyer. And, um, you know, they supported me and had my back the entire way. Of course, you did, you know, you did fulfill a dream. You became a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. And, and Phoenix, Phoenix Life Quotes, he's like, better call Hadi. <laughs> Good reference. <laughs> Absolutely. What? So why did you choose personal injury? I mean, you could have taken on any, any direction for law, but why personal injury? Sure. Um, you know, I, I grew up um, in and out of the court systems. I got a lot of speeding tickets <laughs> because I like racing as a kid. And now my passion for cars had led us, have led us to having car shows in our community and um, taking our cars to events, you know, for uh, people that ask us to take it. And 
um, just going into all these JP courts growing up in life uh, kind of gave me a vision to, wow, you know, it's, it's a little uneasy, a little kind of mysterious and, um, but it was exciting to see the power that the judges had, the ADAs had, and to see how some of them were helping individuals. Of course, the one, and when you have a speeding ticket, it's your fault you were speeding. But that experience led me to it. Also, um, the McCarran Law Firm, Mr. Ali McCarran was a prominent lawyer. He's the only prominent Iranian lawyer. And I just saw his name growing up. And that kind of was inspiration for me as well to grow up and hopefully, you know, be an attorney uh, such as himself. So, how, I mean, I know that was like years ago. I, it's probably changed. But are you one of the larger firms, Iranian firms? Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to say we're definitely the largest Iranian law firm in Houston, um, in Texas. I'm not sure, um, but uh, we fight hard. Uh, I did set the standard and filed the most lawsuits for a lawyer out of law school in the first 10 years with over a thousand lawsuits filed uh, in Harris County alone. And we practice uh, in a lot of different venues. Um, and uh, we just, we, we, you know, there's t people will always say no to you. And you shouldn't be scared to say no back. If they give you a bad offer, just say, okay, no, we're not going to take it. File suit and fight for your clients because your clients hire you as an attorney because they don't understand the situation. And most of them have never been involved in such a catastrophic accident or injury or plant explosion or a dog bite case. And, and they look to you for support, but also for strength. And I just took that strength I, I had growing up in A-Leaf. You have to be very strong. Um, and, and I put that into the field of law. Did, you know, so I, I hear a little bit of like, you got to understand psychology of people. I mean, did you, I don't know, because I'm asking, because I've never been to law school. In law school, is psychology classes taken or did, is that something you studied outside of law school? No, I, um, I took psychology in, um, of course, in DeBakey High School for Health Professions. You have to take some courses in it, but I also took some psychology and sociology course, courses in college. Um, and in my field of law, in most fields of law, you have to be diverse when it comes to the thought process of different individuals, but especially in personal injury law, because you run into all types of individuals from clients to doctors to lawyers to adjusters to experts. Um, and you have to be able to work with all of them and understand them all. And if you guys are hearing the background noise, those are his three kids who are just super cute. <laughs> I they're didn't know if they're adorable. They're all the way in the other. <laughs> Don't worry. They'll be out here pretty soon to annihilate me. It's going to happen. But I'm blessed to ha have them. Yes. I always tell everybody I would rather have kids that are full of energy, uh, nonstop energy, than an introverted, which introverts are good too. But you know, I want, I want them to be able to keep up with that. <laughs> of course. And I would just say, so you guys, if you're wondering how I met my current guest that we, it was not Clubhouse. I was actually on my way to Lubbock, which is where my daughter is going to school in August. And I was like, who's this dude, Hottie? I wonder, and I just kept seeing the signs and like, you know, I'm driving outside of Houston. I just kept seeing who is this guy? And then I started seeing, I looked him up on Facebook because for some reason I, I saw it and I said it. And the next thing you know, on Facebook, an ad came for you. And then I was like, <laughs> I'm going to have him as my next guest. Thank and you so bam, much. here we are. So yeah. no, guys, thank you, you for reaching out. So if you think about it, you can manifest it. I always okay. tell people to think it into existence. It's, it's like the book, The Secret, you know, you mm -hmm. have to, you have to envision it. And as a kid growing up, I daydreamed a lot. Um, and becoming judge was one of my dreams. Uh, becoming a lawyer was one of my dreams. And if you keep thinking about it, you know, God will bless you and, and create the path for you. Absolutely. We have a question already. What? I already love this. Okay. But it's from Phoenix. His name is John. He's asking, how do you handle with the bad rep lawyers have? And how do you make people trust you? Ooh. Oh, God bless. You know, I'm an ambulance chaser. I'm a very tree <laughs> solicitor. You name it, I've heard it all. You know, I take pride um, in, in, in my practice. I take pride to be able to say we've never paid for some type of illegal business for like a tow truck driver or a storage lot or an ambulance chaser and because it's easy, very tempting, very easy to do that. But the second you do it, you tarnish your reputation and the reputation that your clients are going to need when you're fighting for them 
Uh, so it's very easy uh, to, to go the wrong way. But a lot of people, you know, lawyers are liars. And, and it's unfortunately, it's a stigma. And, you know, we've tried a lot of cases. I've personally tried 50 cases, which is um, a lot when it comes to civil practice of law. And I've heard all types of comments from jurors. And sometimes when I get up and do the voir dire, which is talking to the juries to select them, you know, I, one of my last questions is, all right, guys, I, I hate to ask this question, but who here thinks there's too many of me? <laughs> Just too many lawyers, you know, and we don't need lawyers in society. And you get both types of, you know, responses from people like, oh, lawyers, my wife got one for our divorce. And it's like, well, how upset are you at that lawyer? Very upset. And then they're not going to be on the panel. And some people say, you, you know, it's a blessing to have attorneys because they help untangle bad situations. So the, the stigma will come with it. Um, but it's, it's how you present yourself to your clients and to the other side. Absolutely. How you present yourself. Cause I mean, if you, it's that whole people like and trust, whether you're, it doesn't matter what you're selling. That's the yeah. first thing. People like you, they trust you. They want to do business with you. And yeah. the story. Whoops. Here comes number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Be, and, and just say you have to be transparent and transparency will create a lot of confidence. Uh, yes, they do. Very much so. So what kind of jobs, interests, or volunteer activities did you pursue during school and law school? Because this is for those thinking about going into law school. Sure. Um, you know, <laughs> in law school, it's really hard to work. Um, you know, I, I, I was one of the fourth uh, people in Houston to start selling cars on eBay Motors in the year 2000, 2001. Um, back when we had to create servers and type up our own HTML type format to list them on eBay. And um, so I, I did that to fund myself through law school. Um, and a lot of the individuals that own dealerships, they weren't technologically savvy. So they had the cars and we had the technology, you know, the, the know how to do it. And so I sold thousands of cars through college and through law school. Um, and now, you know, I would love to continue that, but I just, you know, I collect cars now. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, being a, you know, selling cars, especially online, that's like a whole, people are trying to learn that right now, myself included. Yeah. What are the soft skills that you learn from that experience that are helping you today in your business? Well, you, um, everything, uh, you know, I, I started selling cars on Richmond Avenue when I was seven years old, going to my dad's shop on Richmond and Buttercup. I would walk out Saturday mornings with a key bag and turn the cars on. And the people would look at me like little seven, eight year old. And it's like, yeah, let's go for a test drive. <laughs> and, and that's just, you know, where I, I kind of got my you know, foundation to, um, I guess, grind and hustle. Um, but when it comes to selling cars online, um, you have to create a product. A lot of times my clients would come and just look at the car and leave happy, very happy because you take a, a lot of photos and you show photos of detailed areas of the carpet to show no stains of the engine bay, you know, of the lines of the car to show that they haven't been involved in an accident. So that, again, it's like being a lawyer's transparency. If you don't take a lot of photos or you just kind of beat around the bush a little bit, then people might not build confidence, especially when they're trying to buy cars from like hundreds and thousands of miles away. Yes, yes. And it's also like, you know, working with you, you know that somebody's going to take really good pictures if I'm in a car wreck or if there's something that happens, knowing those because you've taken it before and you know what to look for because this is what people are looking for. You know what to show like, hey, no, we need this thing. We need that shot. We need from this perspective because – you know, at the end of the day, when you present it in front of the judge and to the jury, you're like, I have everything in front of you. Oh, of course. I try cases sometimes and we have 100 photos of our client's car and I go in there and like an expert body mechanic. Can you imagine selling thousands of cars? I show individuals how and the insurance company, well, it was a minor impact. Then we take off the bumper and then we look at the brace bar and we show that that was bent in and the brackets on it pushed in the trunk frame. And, and then you just start showing how this little minor impact wasn't minor at all. And it did cause a lot of extensive damages. So my experience in selling cars has definitely helped me um, fight for my clients for their property damages. And that's one reason why I became a lawyer, because I said I wanted to help people who lost their car um, in, in crashes. And uh, Samuel, Diamond Mine Result, that's a lot. It's true. It is a lot. I mean, it's people don't think about that stuff. You're like, yeah, whatever. But, you know, you would know better. I've 
wouldn't know. Yeah, yeah. After, no, you have to. After graduating law school, did you know you wanted to start your own firm? You know, I was, I was, um, I was blessed in law school. In my first week of law school, I met Miss Ana Gutierrez and Miss Jamil Thomas, who. Ms. Jamil Thomas's brother, who's an attorney, and my right hand is is on this uh, interview. And Ms. Thomas is my boss at the Hadi Law Firm now. And Ms. Gutierrez's father, after my first year of knowing her and them, uh, told me, "What do you want to do?" And I said, "I want to go work for a lawyer, and I want to learn from my mistakes working for another lawyer." And he said, "No, make a business plan after your first year of law school. Send wow. it to me." And he did. I made it after my first year. I started a practice here in Houston, right across my original billboard on Richmond and Hillcroft. And we handled about 24 cases in that time. One case, a, a, a client brought from another famous firm that we're trying to settle for 40 and we settled for $100,000 as a law student. So I was the only law student in law school with my own law practice under the guidance of Baldemar Gutierrez with the Gutierrez Law Firm. Wow, that's so awesome. You were selling cars, you were you had a law yeah. firm. <laughs> Yes, I feel, everything. <laughs> I feel like that's a typical, like, you know, story that anybody who's coming from, I feel like we're coming from the same background that, yeah, I had to work yeah. 10 jobs. <laughs> yeah, no, tw you know, it's, I always tell people, if you don't do it, someone else would do it. Someone else is going to do it. Um, and although I didn't make money working the law practice, I gained a million dollars in experience in the, I graduated law school in two and a half years instead of three years. Um, I took summer courses also on top of that. I overwhelmed my schedule. I passed in two and a half years. I passed the bar the first time. And then Mr. Gutierrez just handed me the keys and said, congratulations. And to this day, I still work with, you know, his, his children who are lawyers as well. Hey, what I hear is, you know, first you did it for free and then you started charging. Because sometimes as business owners, we want to get paid right off the bat. And sometimes you kind of have to, do things for free. I mean, yes, you have to make money, but in the long run, that experience, those testimonies, testimonials are going to help you. And I can see that it's helped you. Yes, no, definitely. And um, it's kind of like when attorneys pay people, you know, under the table for business. I always told people, why pay someone like that when you can, for example, we offer free rentals and we try to collect from the insurance companies, but if we don't, then we offset it. Uh, we offer, you know, hottie swag and items and we offer them help and support, maybe pay for a, a medication for them up front, you know, to help them out. Um, and, and we invest in the clients themselves who need it uh, rather than the person who wants to hustle a case. <laughs> <laughs> If I had planned this right, I would have came by and picked up a shirt from you so I could have worn it. For <laughs> oh, so we, we forgot. I would have definitely sent you one. Look, this is the youngest of the trio. Hi. hi. This is Say Mr. hi, everybody. Dean. Say hi. Oh, he gave you a kiss. Bruce Brother, give a kiss, Bruce. <laughs> He's almost two. He'll be two on June 13th. Oh, yeah. it's going to be fun times, and he's going to be running the house instead of you. Oh, yeah, they already run the house. And my beautiful wife, they're, you know, they're the bosses of the home. <laughs> I feel like so, I just borrowed the bedroom. So I'm, you, know. <laughs> you just borrowed the food? Oh, okay. Yeah, right, the food and the TV. <laughs> so let's get into your law firm. What cases does your firm take on? Uh, we focus primarily on personal injury law. Uh, we do have a strong team when it comes to immigration as well. Um, we have a strong database of attorneys that we work with for business transactions and family law, because like Mr. John said, the stigma with lawyers. So we always tell our friends and family, if any type of lawyer you ever need, let us know. We have people we work with for years, people we trust. They're not going to price gouge you. They're not going to bill you. you know, take a retainer and after two weeks, say <clears throat> the retainer is over. Um, but ourselves, we, you know, 99% personal injury law all aspects of it from plant explosions to slip and fall cases to dog bite cases. Um, we actually tried so many cases last year on November 12th, 2020, we set the standard in the state of Texas with the most powerful third party case out of Montgomery County, um, which kind of uh, evolved the practice of PI law for all plaintiff lawyers in the state of Texas and all their clients. It, it completely Geico and their firm. It's a major firm that's in 53 States tested us. And we torched them, Texas torch style. <laughs> wow, that's a lot to take in because I, 
I didn't know that Montgomery County, and that's why your billboards are all the way out there. Yeah, and the fact that it was in Montgomery County is why it's even more powerful because it's a little bit of a more conservative venue. Uh, so the individuals in the jury sometimes lean more towards tort reform and what am I doing here? It's just another car accident. And um, the fact that we convinced 12, 12 jurors unanimously to side against us on November 12th, it changed the practice of third party law in Texas Ooh, for the wow. better. Congratulations on that. So Thank you. Some of us who are like, why should I hire a personal injury lawyer? Like, I don't need you. I can handle this by myself. Yeah. Well, um, why do you hire a realtor when you want to buy a home? Uh, be, why? Because the realtor can negotiate a better value for you. And there's always going to be uncertainties involved in purchasing a home. So when it comes to law, um, a lot of our clients have never been involved with this. Some have, but even if you've been involved, it's not good practice to go on it on your own. The insurance companies follow, I call it the four Ds of the industry. They deny your case. They delay your case. They defend your case, and then they try to deprive you of your benefits. Insurance adjusters are trained on how to take advantage of your downfall to their benefit, right? So they pay less. Um, and, and that's why we fight so hard and we always say no to them and, and don't take no for an answer from them. Um, so it's always good to hire a PI lawyer, especially one who's focused in personal injury law, trained and very well versed and experienced in, in handling all aspects of personal injury cases. Why not? I mean, you wouldn't go to an ear, nose, and throat doctor for your foot because they wouldn't right? know. I mean, yeah. they could tell you basics, but it's like that with, you know, going to a lawyer. You want to go to somebody who knows what they're doing, especially if they were like, you know, a car salesman slash lawyer all the <laughs> way. Definitely, yeah. The cars was my, my path. I wish sometimes I can go back to selling cars, but it's – um <laughs> you know, sometimes you have to go from one dream to another. Uh-huh. You have to because you've moved on into something. I would say, would you say that being a lawyer is more of your purpose? Um, you know, I, 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 the more I'm campaigning, the more I feel like being a judge is more of my purpose. So I can continue directly affecting the community like that I live in. And um, one thing growing up in JP courts, even though there were traffic tickets, it was still – scary in there and you know you have to go there from morning until afternoon sometimes and you know i just think there's a way to create a, a better vision of it and maybe a more um, efficient process and so I, I definitely think my purpose is to be a lawyer and, and to continue growing as a lawyer which growing would be hopefully uh, with everyone's uh, blessing to become a judge well we're going to get into that before that let me get into john's qu um comment it's not because a lawyer makes it look easy that arguing in the hands of an expert um samuel says i think service is his part of his calling i do agree service is part of your calling yeah, so thank you if you are in texas especially if you are in the fort bend county precinct four if you're catching this replay and or this oh, is the same <laughs> what's even crazier is like i didn't know all of this i was just like i'm gonna bring this guy this guy in this picture i'm gonna bring him on and then i started researching him and i was like wait a minute he's in the same you know location where my daughter goes to high school so this was meant to be and then i find out he's from a leaf because i lived in a leaf in houston i'm like okay this is it this is it this is the yeah. sign this is happening so Tell us about, you know, when did you know that you were ready to run for a public position? Um, you know, I always had the passion. I supported many judges. Uh, once I became a lawyer, I realized I was like, wow, I can make a change um, in our community by supporting the individuals that are going to, um, for example, determine the law or govern the cases of my clients. And that's what you're doing when you're voting for your party line or for someone that you can relate to. Um, and through supporting judges, I never thought I could become a judge because every judicial position, you have to shut down your practice to become a judge, except <laughs> just justice of the peace. Um, and one judge told me that last year, Judge um, Eric Carter, uh, Precinct 1, um, Harris County. And I was like, judge, why are you mediating? You're a judge. He's like, well, let me, 
justice of the peace, you can keep your practice. And I was like, oh my God, wow. So I can continue serving, you know, the individuals that are in our office and then I can run to hopefully win and become a judge and serve my community. And from there, it just made my dreams, it's uh, possible, <laughs> you know? And so that was um, in the middle of COVID last year. And then, you know, we just filed and leave the rest up to God. Yes. Yeah. So for those who are just joining, my name is Shri. This is Hussein. And we're getting into more about, you know, the justice of peace for precinct four. And so for those who are on here who di don't know, because like myself, what is the justice of peace and like, what do they do? Sure. Justice of the peace. Uh, one of the um, strangest things that they do is the job of a, a coroner. And, you know, so for odd hours, you may be called in you know, to determine the time of death and, you know, of a, of a body, unfortunately. Um, of course, everyone knows because, you know, and look, Judge Jones is, uh, Miss Audia Jones is is, uh, is an attorney herself, and she's married to Honorable Jones in Harris County. Um, she's, but um, we've all sped and, and gotten tickets. So, of course, speeding tickets and all type of uh, misdemeanor traffic violations. Um, truancy, when it comes to minors, minors in possession of paraphernalia, um, and truancy, skipping school, um, so low-level misdemeanor-type crimes, no felonies at all. Um, we also deal, last year in 2019, the, the level that you can file, the monetary level went from 10000 to 20000 So you can file, for example, unfortunately due to COVID, um, there is an escalated amount of um, repossession cases, of vehicle repossession cases, Mm -hmm. um, and I've tried myself personal injury lawsuits. If you have a PI case and your damages are like five, 6,000 and you're willing to consider under 20,000, then you can definitely file in justice of the peace court. It's a little different than other courts. Um, but you may get a trial sooner and, you know, you get a six person jury panel and it's a little bit more comfortable. It's the court for the person that doesn't want to hire a PI lawyer can definitely file their case in that court. Um, and of course, evictions, you know, unfortunately, uh, evictions get processed in justice of the peace courts as well. Oh, yeah, I, I feel like that's a hot topic right now, since unemployment benefits yeah. will be at least the amount that they're giving is ending very soon, if I'm not correct. Yes. And uh, some of the benefits, um, uh, Texas, for example, has stopped some of the eviction benefits. Uh, and I've been into a couple of Justice of the Peace courts in Fort Bend County in the last month. Um, and I was able to watch a, a couple of hearings and trials on uh, eviction cases. And so it's sad. Unfortunately, it's sad, you know. Um, but and I know you can ask me this question. The hardest part about being a judge is staying impartial and unbiased. But, you know, it's um, it's difficult. But, you know, hopefully we can create avenues to support both sides of the table. So both people feel comfortable at the end of the day without punishing one or the other. Absolutely. Hey, Nasir. Now, in the eye, in your eyes, what makes a good justice of peace? Um, you know, uh, the justice of the peace is only the only position as a judicial candidate or a judge that you don't have to be a lawyer. And they're fighting that in Austin right now. They're trying to change that. Um, the current incumbent who I'll be running against uh, the Republican side is a retired officer and, and we thank him for his service. Um, but I definitely think if you're going to be someone that has to uh, try cases and try all types of cases, you should definitely have experience in the courtroom and experience in trying cases. Because the number one question is going to be, how do you want to judge someone else's life in a trial when you haven't practiced and tried one yourself mm. to see how difficult it is to stand up there in front of a judge and jury? Yes, I actually have a very good friend of mine. Her dad is the Justice of Peace out in, um, I want to say Beaumont or a little bit further out, but like somewhere where I was like, really? And I, I kept asking her, I was like, was he a lawyer? Was he this? She was like, no, he ran and he was there for a long time. I was just like, that is crazy that yeah. you don't have to go to law school. That's like one position. We have a question that came in. Let's see. It's from John. In a business like yours, where a lot of money goes around, how do you avoid the trap of getting addicted to mo money? Oh, mo money, mo problems, my friend. It's <laughs> <laughs> I settled. I settled a million dollar case. God bless. Maybe a month and a half ago, um, and 
we have an accounting department. I, I don't, it, the cases settle. I fight hard for the clients. When it settles, it goes to accounting. Um, I don't go and say, oh, wow, I settled this case. Let me pull out a hundred grand and go. Do no, it goes into the vault. It goes into the firm. You know, we have a large employee staff of 25, 26 people. Um, so it's, it's very easy, you know, to get money hungry. Um, and that's one reason why we fight so hard because I've never in my career settled a case because I needed money. Even during COVID, and I told State Farm attorneys all last two, three weeks, guys, State Farm didn't settle one case with us in 15 months. What does that mean? We don't need them in our lives. So it's never about money. And I always tell it's, and that's why we fight so hard and we take our clients' cases to trial because we never look to how much money we're going to get. It's very difficult. It's a great question. Um, and it's easy to get, you know, swayed, you know, with, with that. So Mr. Capo, how are you, sir? Mr. Capo is a, is a staunch advocate in the community. Uh, Mayor Turner has declared Capo Day in honor of Mr. Capo. Mr. Capo, thank you for joining us. A Leaf well, community as well. Hey, Mr. Capo. Wow, I'm very. You should I interview very Mr. Capo. You should interview Mr. Capo next. He's in the heart of A Leaf. Well, you know, with that kind of uh, you know testimony, I'm probably going to get him. So yes, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hit him up. So I, I mean, we're going to get back to your, you know, your race. But I do have a question because you're a personal injury attorney. Is it hard for you to get insured by like these insurance companies for your cars? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yes and no. I tried getting insured with the Mika once. They said no. <laughs> they didn't want to insure it. So, but at the end of the day, the insurance companies evaluate risk uh, to benefits, and they will always come and take your money. So, I have a lot of insurance. Um, I don't want to say how much I spend in insurance, but um, my firm insurance, for example, is expansive. Homeowners insurances. So they will always, no matter your practice. And a lot of people, you know, for example, when we get malpractice insurance for the office. They know who I am. And the insurance <laughs> companies, they appreciate it. They're actually happy. They're like, oh, wow, he wants to. Okay, good. We'll insure him. Because in a way, they're getting some of their money back. <laughs> <laughs> they just might give you a higher rate. They're like, oh, yeah, he wants that for his car. Okay, well Normally it's like 150. Way to do 350. <laughs> yeah, he's taking too much from us. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, how are you, sir? Welcome. So, what do you now? We're gonna get back to your race. What do you perceive as the greatest obstacle to justice, if any? Um, yeah, opportunity to be heard. Um, in our judicial system, there's a lot of amazing judges that'll give you time and listen to you, and then you have judges that are just like next, and they just. They're upset to be on the bench. Well, why are you there? <laughs> go, go do, do something, you know. So the, the, the most, the, and, and I came up with a phrase from day one when I started practicing law. Justice not defended is justice not served. So you have to give people an opportunity to speak um, and let them defend themselves. And that's how you serve the people. So. <clears throat> and what is you know, to this day, besides your beautiful children, what has been your greatest accomplishment in your legal career? You know, if you ask half the people oh, in my legal career, I thought you said in my personal career, I was going to say, if you ask half the people here, they're going to say how he got his wife. So, <laughs> so that's probably my, my greatest accomplishment is 17 years I've been with her now, is a, and she's a blessing. But in my legal career, my greatest accomplishment would be... <clears throat> Um, I would have to say the trial that we had last year, November 12, 2020, because that summarized 11 years of giving blood for our clients and fighting relentlessly for our clients. Um, and I say giving blood because I'm from the SWAT, um, but uh, it, it kind of <laughs> shows how hard we fought without stopping day in, day out, nighttime, morning, weekends, until we accomplished uh, that case and got that verdict. Uh, that changed and preserved the practice of PI law in the state of Texas forever. I promise <laughs> there's only four cases like that since 1916, since the inception of Stowers, which is a protection for third party claimants. And ours was like the fourth or fifth one, the only one out of Montgomery County, and the most powerful one. So that reflects everything we've done um, in our practice. And John is saying, you know, this is just, well, he, I can say that this is just the beginning. Your greatest accomplishment is yet to come. I feel it. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you, sir. Never, never stop giving up, guys. Even if I be, a lot of people say, what are you going to do after being judge? Uh, I'm not running for judge to one day run for mayor or senator or 
you know, I, I might figure out other things while I'm judge. Uh, my, my hopes are judge. But even as judge, you keep expanding your position as judge. You keep creating opportunities for individuals in the community as judge and to where it's an open judicial system and people feel comfortable coming into the courtroom. Hey, I mean, you can't probably say this, but do you see like a long term career with being a judge or is this something that you would do and then you have other aspirations? <clears throat> no, if I become if I become elected judge, I would definitely run for as long as I can and hopefully with the blessings of God retire um, as, as judge. Uh, and it's uh, I'm not trying to run just to do it one term and then say I did it. No, it's not that that doesn't serve the community because if people do elect me as judge, they're putting their vote, they're putting their confidence in you, and you should stand up with that pride and serve for as long as you can serve. Yes, yes, because I also feel like in one year you can't really see change. It takes time what you've implemented, and you really see the change after a few years, and then afterwards you're like, you know what? I don't know why I keep voting for this guy or I love this guy. I want to keep voting for him because I see change. I see it all around me. Correct. Now, what is, what's the name of your car club, by the way? I was thinking about it and I didn't ask earlier. Oh, there's two car clubs that I'm part of. One of them is Team Savage. And my friend Danny uh, is head of that one. And he's a marketing director as well at Aston Martin on Post Oak in Houston. Um, and the other one is Mr. Anthony Sanchez. Anthony was – um, on our Zoom. I'm not sure if he's still there. He was on here earlier, and, and he has um, – he's going to get mad. I forgot the name. You know, but the car culture, the car culture. So me and Mr. Anthony have been rocking with the car culture. We started our first show in Sugar Land Town Center 2015, and we just had our latest show in Sugar Land, which was probably four to 600 people showed up, and uh, it was amazing. Uh, so it's, my passion for cars led me to – you know, supporting these kids. Uh, and I say kids, they were young when they started and they're grown now, but I realized I can't throw these car events as, as an attorney, but I can definitely support them to, to support the community. And it's, it's just exciting seeing kids come out there and even adults, adults come out, they love the cars and, you know, so it's, uh, it's our passion. Well, you know, it's really funny. So I know who Danny is because I know, I used to, I think you know him, Eric Flores, GQ. He Eric. drives, he drives a McLaren <laughs> now. He, I think so. I think so. so. I, I worked with him for eight years. He was on, I interviewed him. And then through him, I met Omar. He's the one of the owner for Sleek Chocolate and several other businesses. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, of course. Mr. So Omar I interviewed Eric Flores. Great people. Yeah, I, great people who I interviewed. And then, then there's Dr. Abdullah. Uh, Kudra, yeah. I know him. He has a, he has a helicopter <laughs> sitting in his warehouse. He has an old school like war helicopter next to his um the 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 car from I forgot the car that talks. What is the car that Kip? Oh man, Kip. What is that? Yeah, Kip. The car's name is Kip. I forget what, but he's he's awesome. Mr. Danny has a strong following. Mr. Danny was an individual with the passion, just like everyone else, and he just. Hadi, will you support me? Of course I will. And now he has probably maybe 20 sponsors now in his organization. Um, and when we have car shows with him, we have one coming up June 19th at Access and Alibi. Uh, the, you know, we have like 10 or 15 police officers there because even they come to support, but also to make sure that the environment is safe for everyone. Yes, yes. See, we see. I told you this was meant to be. Now, Born and raised in the SWAT, we're, of course we're connected. <laughs> <laughs> for someone who's thinking about being a lawyer or and eventually running for pos position, what are a few things you wish you knew before beginning? Um, you know, running for a position, guys, I'm still a kid. I'm still, you know, testing the waters. I've had a blessing of support. Um, but, um, you know, especially for becoming a lawyer, uh, what did I, I wish I knew how to practice PI law <laughs> because the insurance companies will always lie to you and tell you the wrong things. And, you know, so I learned, I learned through the process and always told them, you're only going to teach me the right way. You're only going to teach me. I know your way is the wrong way. And look, after 11 years, we changed the practice of law in Texas with one of the most powerful cases. Um, so I, I, 
I don't wish I knew anything different than I did because maybe if I came with too much knowledge, I wouldn't have been as hungry as I was and I wouldn't have been as, um, you know, aggressive uh, in, in attacking the insurance companies as I was. I, in campaigning, hopefully when I win, I'll be able to look back and say, I wish I did something differently, but campaigning is going to be the same. Just be open and be transparent. And, you know, so far, um, you know, it's, uh, we have a lot of great support and we're learning. <laughs> And when do we get this chance to vote for you? If you are in Precinct 4, Fort Bend County, Texas. Yeah. Sure, we might be primaried, which will be March of next year, but hopefully no one will primary us. Um, if we're not primary, then the election will be November 8th, 2022. November 8th, 2022, guys. So if you are in, if you happen to move into the Fort Bend County Precinct 4, this is the guy that you want to choose. And if you are kept, you're joining now or you're catching this replay, you've already known a little bit about him. So, it, you know, the hardest question that I ask everybody is how does one connect with you? Oh, please call me on my cell phone, 713-292-7323. Email me, hottie at hottieforjudge.com. Go to our website, www.hottieforjudge.com and donate a dollar. If you appreciate this live call and you love what Miss Sri is doing for the community, Donate one dollar to our campaign, um, and I say a dollar uh, because I just think a small amount is something that everyone can afford, uh, and a small amount can show a lot of gratitude and, and make a big change in the community. Um, candidates usually want hundreds and thousands, and I'm okay. Just, I wish I could say fifty cents, but I don't think you can donate that online. <laughs> no, but yay! That's a dollar is off of the dollar menu, guys. If you can just donate something from the dollar menu which is one dollar or yeah. even a cup of coffee trade in a cup of coffee from starbucks to give to the donation for this gentleman right here i would say do it and so i want to thank all the viewers for joining us tonight i want to thank you for taking thank time you. out of your hectic day and your wonderful Please. beautiful kids running around to do this live with me and share your journey so if you're not following him right now and you're watching right now you can go to the drop down menu and just hit follow if you're catching the replay you can just hit that you know his handle on in the caption and last but not least do you have any last words for us before we end um guys you know we all live in a different environment right now with covid but life is slowly going back to normal the court systems are all opening up and you know just stay strong stay vigilant um focus on the right path um, and don't be afraid to take a loss, right? Sometimes you got to take a step back to move forward even stronger. And we should look at COVID and all, unfortunately, millions of people lost their lives, but hopefully it creates a path in the future that we can grow stronger as a society and as a world as a whole. Thank you so much for these wonderful words of wisdom. And until my next live, which is tomorrow evening, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Hussein. Thank and you. bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you for joining.